are so pleased to have with us today uh, Al Bakari, who is, uh, your background is, is remarkable. I know you uh, as an icon of Fisherman's Wharf, a historian, an educator, a photographer, an artist, and, uh, but you really represent San Francisco and welcome. I'm happy to be That's here. That's what this program is about, is to try to capture the interesting personalities of the city. The city is the sum of its interesting personalities, in my opinion. And you are definitely, uh, of, of there was a whole generation of really interesting people who were doing a lot of things at once. Why don't you tell us about that era and how you, where, do you, where you moved through that, that, that river? Well, if it's a journey on a river, it's an exciting one. Um, someone said once, life and death are one as the ocean and the river are one. And it's kind of true. Uh, I'm native born. Uh, and because of my vintage, I was just blessed to live in the city in a very creative period. Um, Pre-World War II, uh, right after that, the fabulous 60s. So I've seen poets, artists, and I was blessed to have a father who felt that part of my education, he wasn't worried about my schoolwork, so he would say, he'd go to you and he'd say, Arthur, I want you to be father to my son for a day. So amongst my fathers were people like uh, Phil Saroyan, William Saroyan, uh, Eugene O'Neill, photographers like Edward Weston, uh, <laughs> it goes on. It's remarkable. Uh, and this caliber, Benny Bufano, uh, labor leaders like uh, Harry Bridgets, um, activists like Paul Robinson. So they all came to this city, and I never knew how great they were until years later. But the exciting part was seeing the city through their eyes. This was a city that incubated creativity. Creativity is a survival skill. That's when a city could say, the city that knew how, it rebirthed from the fire and earthquake. And labor leaders and industrialists could fight like hell at the labor table or the bargaining table. But came five o'clock, they would say, okay, Art, let's go have a drink. It's a different thing, it's dog eat dog. We have a precious city, we're a peninsula goes like this, and of course, Fishman's Wharf is at the tip of it, but every district should be looked at economically, socially, and culturally under a microscope. Unfortunately, our political fathers today, who have good intention, do not look at it from that point of view to see how we integrate so the fabrics of a city coexist together and we can survive. You know, this is a city that has survived so much, but it's given so much. You know, I take pride. Uh, I think uh, because of the coalitions, we're a city of coalitions, this is the most exciting period of all. We have gay community, black community, Latino community, you name them, there's a community. But what I love about them is they share. If only the politicians could embrace this and integrate this and then put it under a microscope and says, now how do we economically, socially, and culturally care for this? and create this inner structure. Why, uh, a question I have asked uh, of th in this broadcast is why aren't people like yourself directly involved with the government of this city? It seems like the government of the city, uh, the maximum age is, is 42 or 35. What happened to the, 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 that other generation, the several other generations? Why is it so exclusively youth running the, uh, the city government? <laughs> it's it's kind of sad. Uh, in the past, there was a flow of all ages combining, of intellectual capacities of sharing. Today, <coughs> you fall in a category and they figure inky dinky boxes. It was a crazy little song like that, inky dinky boxes. And now they figure, okay, so I have this army of young Turks bright, but they don't always communicate with themselves, but they haven't been through the arena. And the word compromise is what moves government forward. So we don't have that. We do not have that. So if someone says, well, what about people like myself and other talents? Uh, yeah, they'll get called to say, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. But there are commissions, there are committees, 
there are activities where our voice could be very, very heard. You I always took it when I represented the war for any other community. I figured, no, uh, since they're not going to integrate intellectually, then I'm just going to take command. One guest uh, <coughs> brought up the, uh, <coughs> the interesting concept that there were people like yourself, and, and of course I was born here too, that have the kind of love we have for the city, the kind of love you have for another individual. I, I see and I, uh, that the, the board and the others uh, that are on these commissions are, are using, it a, using the city as an ideological platform, but they don't have that love for all its neighborhoods and all its beauty and all its life. Is that how you see it? No, you're absolutely right, Arthur. Look, at this station is in a core section where we have the vibrancy of the Latinos. I have photographed every tattooed wall in this neighborhood. I've walked every street. I love it. When they, I love when they hear my Italian name, Alessandro, and I walk in there and they go, Alejandro, como se está? And you know, they ask me how I feel today, and they're sharing. I even like it when I talk to the hookers, <laughs> you know, and I'm photographing, you name it. We're not preserving the integrity or the vibrancy or the character of the heart or the people or what their needs are. And so out of that, you create rebellion. So that's why we have the drug problems. That's why uh, we have the rebellion of the youth. You see markings on the wall. This gang runs this three blocks. This gang runs this one. And that should not be if you open up the doors. And that's what a politician has to do. He has to walk the streets. He has to know the vibrancy, the heartbeat of the people. He has to see what their needs are. He has to look at the demographics and say, okay, what's the age group? How many go to school? How many don't go to school? How many senior citizens? How many have this? And what are their financial status? We also have a wave in here of immigrants and we created what we call security areas. So we have quacks instead of good doctors handling people that need help. So we're not trying to look at the whole. You know, we did the whole city under a microscope so that the supervisor of this district or the one that covers North Beach and the waterfront, another one that goes out to the Excelsior or Hunter's Point, if they would put these under a microscope and say, wait a minute, this is my turf. This is what I represent. These are the needs of the city. Now, how do we integrate this? And what are the programs that help the whole city? They're not doing that. Let's look at the waterfront. They have intentions, but they don't do that. I mean, you're practically the mayor of Fisherman's Wharf, and you're, oh, it's, it's been something you've <laughs> dedicated so much time to. You've, there's museums you've created. I want uh, there's the, the photography that you do. And by the way, the viewer doesn't understand that we're talking about professional photography, your artwork. You, the Fisherman's Wharf is one of your great passions, and the whole waterfront for that matter. What's your view of it right now? Well, very quickly, I'm deeply concerned about our waterfront. Many people aren't aware, San Francisco does not own the waterfront. The state does. It's entrusted to us. That's very, very important. And we can lose it. Uh, retrofitting of the 7.5 miles is going to go into the hundreds of millions of dollars. So we have something that is broken. Well, let's take Fishman's Wharf. I've loved that since a boy. Even now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even now. And, and, and there, there, there are reasons. I'm a North Beach lad. My great-great-uncle, Father P. Perny, brought the Salesian Order to America, built St. Peter's and Paul's Church, so I did a book called The Italian Cathedral. But as a lad growing up, you know, you learn to <coughs> develop a mind, but your hands, you got to learn. So boxing came natural, sports came natural. Uh, I had two idols that guided me, both from the wharf. Joe Oliotto became mayor, and he went to Salesian like me, and I wanted to imitate him, so I had to get high grades. I mean, I worked my rear end off for high grades. And then there was another one who played ball, and that was Joe DiMaggio. I was the altar boy for his first marriage. That was also his second. So these two Giuseppes were my idols as a kid growing up. So the wharf was like my playground, and my classmates were all Sicilian lads. I thought of nothing of diving off of fishing boats. When I look at that lagoon now and I said, how am I alive? I should be dead. <laughs> Pollution. 
But that was my playground. You jumped into it. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I just, I just love the war. So then what makes the war special is its history, the birth of the city as the waterfront, its heritage, its blend of Asian culture, Italian culture, predominantly Italian, and then the traditions. And so I dedicated myself when I became chairman of the Preservation Beautification of Fishman's Wharf to say, how do we keep the fish at Fishman's Wharf? At one time, they were going to eliminate everything. One developer, no more fishing industry. So now we have a fishing industry that's the largest on the West Coast, and nobody knows this from Pier 45. Uh, the port has done an outstanding job of doing the lagoons and repairing them, and there's excitement. Now, keeping the fish at Fisherman's Wharf is a challenge, and so when I walked away, and they still say, no, you can't leave us. Well, I'm, I really won't, but they got to keep the fish at Fisherman's Wharf. That keeps that economic engine going. People want to go to the wharf. Out of every 10 visitors, eight go to the wharf. And now we have something exciting that I played a very important role going back to 74. We have there a Fisherman's Seaman Memorial Chapel dedicated to those who died at sea. It's beautiful, by the way. And now we're building a Campanile that's right. going up 26 feet independent. You'll hear an 860 pound 1890 bell ring for services. Then we have carols. I can play 1,200 melodies. And fire or police can use it as a command post in case of tragedy. And we can hear it for 32 blocks. And that really ticked me off because I found out that out of 111 sirens all over, when I looked into this, only 11 worked. So that started the thing two years ago. And now they're all working, and that's why I'll have this system. By the way, Arthur, I want you to come as my guest when we have this special ceremony in I mean, May for the uh, company. I mean, my grandfather was uh, um, Sabella down on the wharf, and uh, that particular part where that chapel is, such a quiet, wonderful place. It is. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, and all the hustle bustle of the wharf, it's, it, you can feel the, the, the almost a spiritual energy there. I'm hoping that after I'm gone and others at the wharf, that the chapel will remind all, and when the bells ring every day at nine, noon, and six, it will say in the engraving on the plaque that will be on it, will be, for whom the bells toll, in memory of the fishermen who built Fishman's Wharf and those who died at sea. If they keep that industry there, it's important. Then from there, which is the tip, uh, I've created something very important. I just lost a colleague of mine, Piero Patra, who died. The architect. And I put architects, engineers, and planners, and we've done a roadway concept going from the Presidio all the way to the airport, creating economic, social, cultural units every five-minute walk so that we can enhance the economy of the area and then we'll cross the city and we can go by municipal transportation, car, bicycle walk, by water taxis and by ferries. It's an exciting uh, concept and a lot of people are very on board on it. Now with that comes a development and of course if San Francisco is to survive as a tourist city since we're, we've lost, we were 40 percent office space vacancy this is a very important topic. But I'm going to have to. <laughs> what I want to do is I want you to come back. I, I want I'm happy to come back. Right after the Fisherman's time. Wharf, now we start getting into the more controversial Pier 27. Why don't we come back and talk about that, okay? You got a deal. All right, Al. <laughs> Al Bakari, thank, thank you for you. being us. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.